Welcome to the section 2 of this course. So in this section, we are going to learn what is REST and its main concepts. We are going to create a REST client in Android by hand. So what I mean when I say by hand, it's that we are not going to use any libraries. So in the second and the third video, we are going to create a REST client in Android using pure Java. In the fourth and last video, we're going to create a REST client in Android using the retrofit library. So what we're going to learn in this section is the concepts of REST. So we want to make sure that you fully understand what is REST. Then we're going to create a REST client in Android uh, without the use of any library. And then we're going to use retrofit and we're going to learn a little bit about retrofit, probably the most used library when it comes to Android APIs. And then we're going to learn a little bit about retrofit library, which is probably one of the most used libraries in Android when you want to create a REST client. Okay, so first let's understand what is REST. Okay, so in this video, we're going to understand what is REST, what are the methods that, that we can use, and also what are the response status codes and what are the main codes we have. So it stands for representational state transfer. So you can think about it as a way to access resources using the HTTP protocol. Okay. So what is a resource? So I want to give you an example here. Every time when you, for example, browse, use your browser to access YouTube. Okay. You're actually making a get request. Okay. You're making a get request to the server the YouTube server and you say, okay, YouTube, please get me your homepage. Okay. And then the server says, okay, this is my web page. So the YouTube server give you its resource, which is basically HTML full of images and strings and colors and styles, you know? So this is one kind of resource, a, a web page. You can see a web page as a resource. So what are the other types of resources we have? What are the methods? So right here, when you're browsing a web page, you're using the get, right? But what are the other methods that we can use? So for example, here we have four methods. We have more, but at the moment, we're going to just focus on these four here. So of course we have the get. So the get is usually when you're making, you're browsing web page, you're making get requests, okay? So we have the post, which is used to submit data to the server. So for example, when you're filling out a form on a web page, when you click on submit, you're actually doing a post most part of the times. Okay. So the post is used to post data to the server. So put basically it's used to update data. So most part of the time when you see put means they're actually updating a resource. Okay. So one example could be, let's say you're updating your address on Facebook. Your address is already there, right? So when you update the address, you're actually doing put probably. And finally, we have the delete. So as the name says, it's used to delete resources. You can think about it, for example, as you wanted to delete a post from your timeline. So what you would do, it's normally you would use the delete method. What do they look like when I do a get request? How does it look like? So let me give you an example of our sample application that we are building. So we have profiles to vote. I hope you still remember the part where we could give votes to the profiles. So the way I get these profiles is through a get method. Okay. So I do a get to my server here. And I'm telling to my server, Hey, give me the profiles. Okay. So get me the profiles and then the server returns me the data that I need. Okay. So as you can see here, this is not a HTML because my application is going to read this data. It's not a human that is going to read this data. Okay. So I don't need colors. I don't need font sizes. I don't need styles, right? Because the way that this data is going to be displayed is it depends on the application, right? So all that I need actually is 
the data itself, the resources. Okay, so this is how a GET request looks like. Okay, but let's say that I wanted to see all the votes from other users. Okay, so it doesn't seem right. So how can I see the votes that other people have gave? It is not correct. So the server should have a way to tell you that what you're doing is wrong, right? And they do it using the status codes. Okay, so when you're doing a request, you're going to get a response. And this response has a status code. So I'm going to show you here what are the main types of the codes we have. It's not all of them. But this is probably the most common codes that you're going to see. So if you get a 200, it means OK. So when you see 200, it probably means that what you're trying to do was successful. OK, we have also the 400, which means bad request. So you can think about it as you want to communicate with the server, but you're not following the structure or your data it's malformed or invalid so if you send data that it's not correct you're probably going to receive a bad request response code we also have the 401 which is unauthorized you can think about it as you wanted to post something on facebook but you haven't uh, logged in already so this is not authorized right so if you want to do something that you usually need credentials and you haven't provide them, usually you're going to get a 401, which means unauthorized. Finally, we have the 404, which is very, very common. So every time when you're browsing a web page, you're trying to access a resource that is not available anymore or it doesn't exist, you're going to see a 404 response which means that what you're trying to access does not exist anymore. And then we have also the 500, which means internal server error. So if you see a 500, usually it means that there was an error inside the server. So it's not the client fault, okay? So every time when you see 500, it's not the client fault. Something goes went wrong inside the web server. Okay. So this is the overview of REST. It stands for Representational State Transfer. So it is an architecture designed for network applications. It's based on the HTTP protocol. It is a client-server protocol that relies on HTTP. When you're doing the request and the methods, it's based on HTTP. And you can think about it as a way to create resources on the server, create, modify, or delete resources in the server. So it's very important that you understand the concepts of REST. So I encourage you to go ahead and read a little bit about it. I'm really sure that it's going to help you understand a little bit more about REST.